thanks a lot. Can you hear me? It's working. Perfect. So thanks for coming. I, I'm Luca Magnoni. I'm a computer engineer from CERN, from the IT department. And I'm here today to basically tell you a story on how we are using Kafka since two years for doing monitoring at CERN, how it helped us, how we help uh, our user. And uh, well, before jumping on the actual uh, Kafka part, I will briefly tell you what CERN is, what we do there, and uh, how computing is uh, key features and how monitoring is also something very critical and what are the challenges that Kafka help us uh, solve with that. So CERN is the uh, European Center for Nuclear Physics, has been founded in 1954, uh, basically after the Second World War, to put the European nation together to make science and not to make war, and it worked. Um, uh, the idea is to do fundamental research on particle physics. It's nowadays a worldwide collaboration with more than 10,000 users from all around the world. Um, it is located close to the border, like actually on the border between France and Switzerland. Uh, it's very close to Geneva Lake, uh, it's very close to Geneva. You can see the Mont Blanc at the end of the picture. You can see other mountain here at the top. You can also ski a little. There is a little ski resort on the bottom right. It's very good for lunch break. So it's an amazing, <laughs> it's, it, it's really, it's an amazing place to be and to work. And, uh, mm, if you want to do fundamental research on particle physics, uh, the same way you need some like telescope to look at the star or microscope to look at molecules, you need quite some dedicated special equipment. In particular, uh, particle physics research happen accelerating particle beams at very high speed, very, very close to the speed of light, so that they accumulate a lot of energy and to make them collide and to study what new particles are generated out of these collisions. And uh, you see that most of the picture is actually taken by these uh, yellow and blue ring there. And those are actually particle accelerator that are uh, some of the very special equipment that are, uh, is uh, basically is installed at CERN. Uh, those equipment is special not only because uh, of its size. It's like the world largest uh, machines that uh, were ever built, uh, 27 kilometer in circumference. Um, it's also special in what it does, uh, because to accelerate particle, first things you need to keep them on track, and you need uh, so-called magnets that are able to capture the particle within pipes. And uh, to have those magnets to work like that, you, know, so you, know, you need also to make them very, very cold, like it's one of the coldest places in the galaxy for sure, and it's like 1.9 Kelvin degree. It's quite a challenge, it's quite an engineering challenge. Um, uh, also because you need the vacuum within the pipes where particles are, because you don't want to have like a particle interacting with any, any other things, any other gas molecules. So you need also something more than 100 kilometer of pipes to make high vacuum within those two um, pipes. And here you can also get an idea on what happened in those big blue pipes. There are two uh, beams, two pipes where beams circulate in opposite direction. They are accelerated uh, faster and faster. And at the end, they collide in, uh, let's say, well-defined spots where uh, particle detectors, where um, basically the texture, that we are going to see in a moment how they look like, has been built to track images of uh, how that particle um, uh, uh, basically, what type of particle they um, generate. And this, uh, the same picture you see in the background here, is taken from detectors of like uh, probably 40 years ago, where this type of uh, study could be done actually by human eyes, looking at actually traces on like a gigantic photography. Uh, nowadays, particle detector looks more like this. Those things are uh, gigantic devices high, like five-store building high, heavier than Eiffel Towers. You can see that in each of those pictures, there are actual people, workers there. You have to really look carefully to, to, to see where they are. But those things are uh, gigantic things where the uh, accelerator beam 
cross right in the middle of these cylindrical things. And they are, at the end, uh, cylindric, um, let's say, layer of different type of sensor that each of them collect some specific type of information on the particle that are produced. So you get some idea of how the collision of those particles looks like. It's like this 3D picture that we can uh, look at here. And uh, the only thing is that you have around 40 million of those per second. So you can imagine that looking at that one by one is quite a challenge. <laughs> so that is where computers and computing plays a major role in what CERN does every day. Um, overall, if you consider that the amount of data we have to deal with, it's around one billion of collision per second. That generates around one petabyte of data per second. Dealing with one petabyte per second is quite an enormous uh, challenge per se, and also because uh, the information is, the, the, let's say, the interesting event that scientists want to further study are pretty rare, very rare, like one, 10 to the minus 13.